Amazing Peace, a Christmas poem by Maya Angelou. Thunder rumbles in the mountain passes, and lightning rattles the eaves of our houses. Flood waters await us in our avenues. Snow falls upon snow, falls upon snow to avalanche over unprotected villages. The sky slips low and gray and threatening. We question ourselves, what have we done to so affront nature? We worry God, are you there? Are you there really? Does the covenant you made with us still hold? Into this climate of fear and apprehension, Christmas enters. Streaming lights of joy, ringing bells of hope, and singing carols of forgiveness high up in the bright air. The world is encouraged to come away from rancor. Come, the way of friendship. It is the glad season. Thunder ebbs to silence, and lightning sleeps quietly in the corner. Floodwaters recede into memory. Snow becomes a yielding cushion to aid us as we make our way to higher ground. Hope is born again in the faces of children. It rides on the shoulders of our aged as they walk into their sunsets. Hope spreads around the earth, brightening all things, even hate, which crouches breeding in dark corridors. In our joy, we think we hear a whisper. At first, it is too soft, then only half heard. We listen carefully as it gathers strength we hear a sweetness. The word is peace. It is loud now. It is louder, louder than the explosion of bombs. We tremble at the sound. We are thrilled by its presence. It is what we have hungered for. Not just the absence of war, but true peace a harmony of spirit, a comfort of courtesies, security for our beloveds and their beloveds. We clap hands and welcome the peace of Christmas. We beckon this good season to wait a while with us. We, Baptist and Buddhist, Methodist and Muslim, say, come, peace. Come and fill us and our world with your majesty. We, the Jew and the Zionist, the Catholic and the Confucian, implore you to stay a while with us so we may learn by your shimmering light how to look beyond complexion and see community. It is Christmas time, a halting of hate time. On this platform of peace, we can create a language to translate ourselves to ourselves and to each other. At this holy instant, we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ into the great religions of the world. We jubilate the precious advent of trust. We shout with glorious tongues at the coming of hope. All the earth's tribes loosen their voices to celebrate the promise of peace. We, angels and mortals, believers and non-believers, look heavenward and speak the word aloud. Peace. We look at our world and speak the word aloud. Peace. We look at each other, then into ourselves, and we say without shyness or apology or hesitation, 
Peace, my brother. Peace, my sister. Peace, my soul. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. The thrill of hope a weary world rejoices for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn fall on your knees and hear the angel voices oh no Divine, O oh, night, when Christ was born. O oh, night, divine, O oh, night, O oh, night, divine, O oh, night, divine. The late author Laura Ingalls Wilder wrote, we are better throughout the year for having in spirit become a little more childlike again at Christmas time. I don't think there's anyone, whether young in age or young at heart, that doesn't relate to at least some of that sentiment tonight as we gather in this ritual of joy and wonder and magic and mystery. My name is Christopher Rowe, and I'm one of the ministers here alongside our senior minister, Fred Wooden, who has the privilege and honor of serving this 150-year ministry. And as we celebrate the mystery of this evening together, I invite all of us to relax and stop the resistance of that childlike spirit. Relinquish tension and open ourselves to whatever being childlike is, again, in this sacred and special family service. This is Fountain Street Church, and I'm so glad you're here. Tonight, as we gather to celebrate Christmas, we are reminded that there is within us and among us a magnificent light which no darkness can put out. The light of truth lives in each and every religious tradition. Each tradition reflects one color of light, but altogether, light of truth is greater than any one light in the spectrum. During Advent, we lit a candle each week for faith, hope, love, and joy. These now form a circle of light around the Christmas candle, which we light every Christmas Eve. The light of Christmas is not a solitary light. As we prepare to celebrate Christmas, we also honor the light that shines in and through the world's religious and spiritual traditions. So in this spirit, we light candles in honor of our brothers and sisters who celebrate a different religious or spiritual heritage. We celebrate the mother of all religious and spiritual traditions the earth-based spiritualities. We welcome all pagans as sisters and brothers. We celebrate the light of the winter solstice, the gift of life's rhythms and seasons, born from the body of our goddess, the Great Mother. In this season of light, we celebrate the Hindu commemoration of Diwali. With Hindus, we welcome God with lamps that shine in the darkness. In this season of light, we join with Jews who have celebrated Hanukkah, the Feast of Lights. 
In this season of light, we join with Muslims who have recently completed the celebration of Ramadan, who through fasting have sought to see the inner light of Allah. With Buddhists, we celebrate the Buddha nature of every living being. May all sentient beings live in peace. Tonight, we join with all people, religious and secular, believers and non-believers. We celebrate flame of the divine burning within, among and around us all. Tonight, we recognize the magnificent diversity of language, culture, ethnicity, gender, and sexual orientation. Tonight, we celebrate the one eternal light of life, living through us, one and all. faith is but a single gem upon a rosary of beads. The thread of truth which runs through them supports our varied human needs. Confucian wisdom, Christian care, the Buddhist way of self-control. The Muslims' daily call to prayer are proven pathways to the goal. From many lips in every age, the truth eternal is proclaimed. By Western saint and Eastern sage, 
and all the good, however named. Beside the noblest of our race, our lives as yet cannot compare. May we at length their truth embrace and in their sacred mission share. May we carry the light of faith with us all year long. Hope is the thing with feathers that perches in the soul and sings the tune without the words and never stops at all. And sweetest in the gale is heard and sore must, and sore be the, and sore must be the storm that could abash the little bird that kept so many warm. I've heard it in the chillest land and on the strangest sea, yet never in extremity it asked a crumb of me. May we carry the light of hope with us all year long.
<clears throat> Do not call yourself a hopeless romantic, for to be romantic is to see the world as it ought to be despite all the darkness. You wish deeper things for the world. You dream to see goodness fulfilled and love to overcome. You are, in fact, a hopeful romantic, living with courageous Christ-likeness in a world gone mad. May we carry the light of love with us all year long. soul sings in gratitude. I am dancing in the mystery of God. The light of the Holy One is within me, and I am blessed, so truly blessed. This goes deeper than human thinking. I am filled with awe at love whose only condition is to be received. The gift is not for the proud, for they have no room for it. The strong and self-sufficient ones don't have this awareness but those who know their emptiness can rejoice in love's fullness. It's the love that we are made for, the reason for our being. It fills our, our inmost heart space and brings to birth in us the Holy One. May we carry the light of joy with all of us all year long.
So I'm going to tell two jokes, one now and one later. <clears throat> Some of you have heard this one. So the three wise men are traveling through the desert on their way to Bethlehem, and one of them's holding a gift of gold, and another one's holding a gift of frankincense, and another one's holding a gift of myrrh. They're in the middle of the desert, see? And one wise person looks at the other and says, Mark my words, Melchior, this is going to get way out of hand. The gift thing, you know. Have you done a lot of shopping? Yeah, wrapping and things like that. And so where am I coming off asking you for money? Because I want you to get your inner wise person in place. Which is to say you bring a gift to acknowledge your appreciation of someone. That's what a birthday gift is. And they were birthday gifts, weren't they? Birthday gifts. To say, you're special. You matter. You are important to me. And of course, you have to choose the gift quite wisely. But it doesn't have to be big. It can be quite small. But the point is, you thought of that person. So what's an offering at a church? There's no one to give it to. Yeah, there is. There's a person you know that if you could, you'd give a little something to right now. You know you would. Maybe someone you forgot. And said, oh my gosh, I didn't get a gift for. Insert person's name here. Or I just thought of, that's what I mean. So the offering is a time for you to give something in affection for that person, not to that person, but to be shared. So, what will it be? You get to decide. Will it be gold or frankincense and myrrh? Will it be a Lego set? Will it be a, a Pokemon? That goes back to my, age, oh, my old times as a dad. Will it be something you know that person would love. It doesn't matter. Just give. Your offering to that person you know that you love will now be most gratefully received.
Does anyone want to help me up here? I'm going to tell a story. I'd love to have an audience. Anyone want to help me? That would be a younger person. Would you like to help me out? You, 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 you. Come on up. Come on up. It's okay. I just need someone to talk to. If not, I'll get all these older kids to come up here because I know you when you were young. Little kids. If you are ever a little kid, you're allowed to help me up at the steps here. Come on. Come on. It's okay. And I said, if you were ever a little kid, so it's an age inclusive thing. Come on up here, cool, cool, cool. I, help me, because I'm going to need your help to get up in a minute. Hey, dude, how are you? Have a seat. All right. It's allowed. Come on, sit down. I love the sparkly dress. That's excellent. Hey, how are you doing? Excellent. Glad to hear it. Wow. My, the average age is going down like fast up here. I'm really completely jazzed by this. Hey, how are you? Sit wherever you want. In front, behind, it doesn't matter. It's getting have... full. It's getting full? Really? Cool. That's excellent. A bunch of people coming. A bunch of people coming, some staying. It's really excellent, isn't it, Gray? Okay, now, <clears throat> I want to start with a story that isn't about me, it isn't about you, it's about his brother. I have that, that fellow there, he's one of my kids. And I, he has a big brother. <clears throat> and when he was about four years old, he asked his mother, how did I get here? Anybody ever asked that question? Where did I come from? And you got a story, didn't you? You got a story. You did. Hi, Iris. You had a story? No, I'm not asking you to tell it. Just who, who actually has heard the story? We all have a story about how we got here. I don't know your story, and it would be fun to hear your story. And they can be different for every person, and that's the great part. But I'm going to tell you his story of what he heard, because he asked his mother, how did I get here? And my wife, his mom, said, well, there was a time when it was time for you to arrive, and because you were growing inside me, she said, we had to go to the hospital so you could come out nice and safe. And so we got up in the middle of the night to go to the hospital, and the next day, May 10th, you were born. And he was four years old. Are you four? Four, five. Four, you're five. Well, he was four, so you're bigger. So he was four years old, and he said, May 10th, you mean I was born on my birthday? <laughs> Do you ever think about that? Your birthday is your day, but it's also a day other people were there too. Did your moms or dads or grandparents or friends ever tell you about the first time they saw you? Did you ever hear that story? I'll bet you did. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Everybody that ever was has a birthday. What's your birthday? Who wants to tell me their birthday? Yeah, what's your birthday? April 3rd. April 3rd. Anybody else have that birthday in the room? You're the only April 3rd here. How about you? <laughs> September 16th. You remember these days. What's your birthday? March 17th. March 17th. Well, don't you have a birthday? <laughs> How about you, youngster? You in the wonderful blue shirt. Hi. My birthday is October 12th. October 12th. Everybody says, how about you? March 2nd. March 2nd. How about you? All? November 5th. November 5th. That's my dad's birthday. Excellent. Give me. How about you? Uh, May 22nd. May 20th. Isn't it great how they all know their birthdays? And guess what? You were all born on your birthday. What's your birthday? August 18th. 18th. He's August 6th. See that big guy over there, that one? I was there when he was born. Is that your dad beside you? What's your birthday? Um, June. June 16th. Dad, were you there? there? You were there. I see a couple of moms here. Were you there when your youngsters were born? <laughs> well, I say that because people arrive in families differently. Sometimes you arrive with the person who carried you until you were born. And sometimes you come into a whole other family that wants you too. And you have two birthdays, the day you arrived in the world and the day you arrived in your family. And they're wonderful days both. You wanted to say what day your day... Okay. 
What was your birthday? October 21st. October 21st. I haven't heard a single birthday that's the same yet. What's yours? May 2nd, 2011. May 2nd, 2011. Oh, my goodness. Boy, you all like to talk about your birthdays, don't you? May 28th. May 28th. I'm, th I'm so glad you love your birthdays. Yes, my Cyrus. March 17th. March 17th. Like that kid right there? The same birthday. How about you? February 11th. I'm a February baby, too. April. Excellent. Fantastic. Well, I don't know if you realize this, but everybody in this room has a birthday. Your moms, your dads, your grandparents have birthdays, and that means they were babies. Can you, can you think about your, can you imagine your grandpa being a baby? Ever seen a picture? Here's a picture of me when I was a baby. Upside down, but that's typical. If, you, if you're very careful, you can look at the picture of me when I was three months old. There, that's me when I was three. So, do I look like other babies at three months old? Kind of like. Yeah. I bet you I look a lot like some of you when you were three months old. I have hair sticking up on the top of my head. Yes, I do. And I want to talk about this because Christmas is, what is Christmas about? It's not just about Santa or presents or angels or bells. It's about someone's birthday. We talk about it being Jesus' birthday. But guess what? That means everyone in this room was like Jesus once. We were all babies who got born. And I'm willing to bet that like this dad and that mom and that mom, the day that you, had, that you arrived was as special to them as Christmas is to you. Am I right, moms and dads? Did you tell everybody around the neighborhood like an angel? Yeah. That's right. Did you find people showing up at your house with gifts like the wise men? Yeah, you did. It seems to me the story is not really all that different. A baby is born and people want to say, hey, we have a baby. And everybody says, congratulations, here are your diapers. <laughs> Here's all the milk. It may not be gold, frankincense, and myrrh, but it's really the same story for everyone. So we think Christmas is special, but it really isn't. And people say, why can't we have Christmas every day? And we do. Think about it. Every day is somebody's birthday in this room, I'll bet. And every day someone is saying, welcome to a new child. And every day someone's getting gifts that are being sent by everybody else. So I want you to think for a second that you and the baby Jesus were all alike at one moment. And that people were singing about you when you were born. What? People were singing about you when you were born. They really were. And you got gifts. And you slept. And you ate. And it's just like Jesus. Now people say Jesus is special. And he is. But in some ways, he's no more special than you or you. And you could be just as special in many ways as he was because every one of you can do what? You can change the world the way you choose to live. Some of you will be doing wonderful things as you get older. And most of you, I bet, will have your own babies. And when that happens, you'll become angels and wise people. So. Tomorrow is Christmas Day, but today is Christmas Eve. And who knows? Tomorrow, something fresh and new will happen to you. But today, today you get to be the baby Jesus for just a little while. And remember that angels sung about you and you and you and you. And wise people came and told, gave gifts to you and you and you. And that you are just as special as everybody else. I want you to thank you for listening and talking to me. And you know, you made it a very beautiful day in the neighborhood of Fountain Street Church. <laughs> because my name is Fred too. And each and every one of you are very special to me. So Merry Christmas, but Merry Birthday to all of you. Whatever your Christmas day is, 
be, make, it be, make it as merry as you can because we're all glad you're here. Merry Christmas. almost over. Soon we we'll hear a baby crying, and we'll know that God is no mere idea. Soon we'll feel what Mary feels with the baby in her arms, and we'll know we've made God a person, a person among us, weak and wanting, wise and growing. Soon we'll know what is divine about being human, and human about being divine. One candle burning, one star shining in the night sky. One child lying in a manger straw, one God among us, Emmanuel. <laughs>
Tonight we rejoice at the story of Jesus' birth. Out of the deepest darkness of days, we listen and we hear. We take with us the holiness and magic of this night as we go forward into every coming day, remembering. And in the middle of the summer, when the days are warm and long, we still remember the tenderness we feel. My friends, thank you for spending this evening with us. Go forth in peace and in joy and in mystery and in magic and carry that with you until we meet again. Merry Christmas.